Welcome back home, gentlemen. So in this video, I'm going to be sharing with you, in my estimation, or at least by the uh, the scientific corpus, one of the most profound testosterone uh, boosters, free-based testosterone boosters, which again is going to be a system for us uh, maximizing our masculine gene expression. However, there are some there are some potential implications that this particular testosterone booster may not be all positive. I do have a theory, however, that perhaps can mitigate said uh, negative consequences of this booster while still retaining some of the benefits. So we'll just go straight into the content right now. Now, in Nigeria, in Nigeria of all places, there is a plant from the uh, Rubisi family. Now, this particular plant um, has garnered a lot of attention over the last decade. Um, it is known in its country of origin um, as a aphrodisiac-like um, component. And as mentioned previously, has gained some popularity from personalities like Chris Williamson and Huberman. I'm, of course, talking about Fodoja agrestis. Um, it's also, uh, you, you can also source it in places like uh, far west um, Ghana and uh, also in the east of uh, Sudan. Now, much of the research is dependent on a particular aspect of this plant. It's actually the stem of the plant, which they use to make the supplement. Now, the studies have demonstrated that the main systems of, uh, of, of action and utility of uh, Fedoja and why it has so much merit in boosting your testosterone, so the kind of the, the rationality behind why it works so well, is it stimulates something called a luteinizing hormone, which is very, very important in respects to optimizing free best testosterone production in our testicles. Uh, additionally, for doja contains an active compound such as sapacins, which are thought to influence this androgenic hormonal pathway. Now, we are going to go with the rodent studies again, which does some, have some continuity with human beings. They, there's a reason that they use rats for a, uh, for a reason. Um, so supplementation with Fedoja uh, for about five days leads to a remarkable, I mean, a remarkable increase in testosterone, twofold with 18 milligrams per kilogram and threefold with 50 milligrams per kilogram and sixfold with 100 milligrams per kilogram and of course enhanced libido as a consequence of the aforementioned uh, increases in testosterone. Now subsequently in another study um, they actually found that Fedoja increased testicular weight by 11 to 15 percent. It literally it literally gives you big balls. Now before you go rushing off to go and buy some Fedoja Big balls might not necessarily be a, a good thing other than the fact that maybe you can say it. In fact, it actually might be quite toxic. So studies have actually found that Fedoja may cause significant harm to the kidney and uh, liver. A recent animal study reported severe inflammation of kidneys and necrosis, which is tissue death that blackens and, and it dies of the liver cell after um, 40 days of continuous supplementation with about a human equivalent of uh, 607 uh, milligrams. So this does raise some concern about the long-term use of uh, high dosage. Users have also reported minor side effects, nausea, headaches, vomiting, sleep disturbances, and also skin irritation. Though there is absolutely no doubt that Fedoja does increase testosterone in animals by you know, at least a factor of two, it is toxic. Now, let me do say, kind of hands up here, being transparent, I have I have never had any personal experience with Fedoja for these particular reasons. I actually believe, you know, if you're like myself and you don't suffer major low testosterone and you're just looking to increase it, you know, 10%, 20%, 30%, 40%, whatever the case may be, is there's far safer options that I've delineated here in this channel. You know, you've got boron, you've got ashwagandha, and all these other aforementioned things, which I'm going to include in my book, which is, is nearly finished. I can't help theorizing, though, about the principle of hormesis and adaptogens in regards to how this works. So, for example, do note that these toxic effects did manifest themselves because of 40 days at 607 milligrams. It would be interesting to play around with the variables of the dose. So let's say once every six days or let's say 200 milligrams to, uh, per day. So, you know, a third of the dosage. I mean, anything can be toxic in the wrong dosage. I mean, if you eat a ton of salt, you'll die. But if you sprinkle some salt over a nice ribeye or a T-bone, it's actually quite tasty and nutritionally beneficial. Now, 
I personally would not be adverse to do my own personal experimentation. Perhaps if you're an explorer like myself, you will too. But just kind of doubling down on the previous statement about this concept of hormesis and adaptogenic nature, from reading a lot of the utility of testosterone boosters, or it could be any health propagating uh, activity or outcome in some of the things that we do, all of them seem to carry some form of mild stressor to the body. And that in, in and of itself is how you would describe hormesis. So hormesis is the word used to describe when you voluntarily expose yourself to a mild stressor in order to accrue a beneficial biological response. Um, one of the uh, ways I like to describe it, it's like evolution on a micro level as opposed to the macro level of your you know, genetic lineage. You know, if you look at somebody who's uh, very, very tall, for example, perhaps that particular trait was manifested over a hundred different uh, people, you know, your bloodline, because they had to you know, reach up and grab some fruit off the tree. It was a necessity. And in order to live and survive, they had to be that they had to keep that trait and increase that trait. And if we boil this down to the micro level, what are we doing when we do something like uh, exercise, for example? Exercise traumatizes your muscle. It creates something called micro tears in your muscle. You are having a conversation with your body and the conversation goes something like this. Our environment constantly requires us to move heavy resistance. That's what you're saying to your body when you're going to the gym five days a week when you're hitting the bench, Let, let's be specific with this, when you're hitting the bench, I'm having a conversation with my, my body, I am putting you in the environment, the environment is signaling to my DNA that we need to get very good at doing this, this kind of pushing movement and overcoming resistance. Therefore, the body goes, as long as the weight isn't too heavy, you know, mild stress, so the body goes, oh, I'm receiving information here, let me adapt, let me go stronger. But again, the antithesis of or, or let's, the antithesis isn't the right word, the, you know, what the study of Fedoja being toxic is kind of describing is you're giving too much stress to the body and the body's dying. The body's becoming toxic. And the equivalent of the previous analogy that I would just mention, it's like going to the gym and if you've never benched before, putting two plates on either side of the barbell and thinking you can bench. No, the barbell's going to go through your chest and it's going to crush your ribs and break your you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to destroy your heart. But if you maybe start off with 10 kg on either side, you know, maybe you can get 10, 11, 12 reps. And then, you know, across a long period of time, your body begins to adapt and recognizes we need to get very, very good at this. And then, you know, a year down the line, two years, probably more two years down the line, maybe you can start benching two plates. So, and, and, and it's remarkable the continuity of that particular um, word, hormesis, across everything. The first time you take a cold shower, it's terrible. You do it consistently enough, you adapt. Um, the first time you fast, people think they're dying. And then you can do two days, three days, four days, seven days, and you're fine. Yeah? For doja, you expose yourself to a toxic, uh, a, a toxin, or... Uh, I mean, I mean, toxin is probably the appropriate word in this particular context. Uh, too much, going to kill me very, very quickly. A little, little exposure. Hmm, there's something unfamiliar in my body that I need to learn to deal with. And the consequences of that are I need to increase my testosterone. Maybe that's why it increases testosterone. That's an interesting theory that I just had, in fact, is maybe the consequence of increasing masculine genes, getting stronger, getting you know, all those characteristics associated with higher testosterone is because there is a toxin in the body and the body's kind of panicking. It's going, you know, we need to upregulate androgenic activity in order to survive. Just a theory. Are these facts, theories? Hmm. Mostly theories, mostly theories. Uh, but yes, um, it is toxic. Do with this information what you will. I would double down again by saying that this is currently something that I am not doing. And I think in lieu of perhaps of the, some of the things I invite you to consider doing, my invitation on this, I'm a little bit reluctant to uh, send out to you. Anyway, speak soon.